Welcome to my first build video. This will address why my channel is called New Old Steel. I have a new steel bike, an old steel bike, but I've got a hold of another vintage steel bike and wanted to document and film this build. I was lucky enough to snag this one off of eBay and it's a 1987 Fuji Palisade. I really wanted a frame that of course wasn't overpriced. It was steel, lugged, at least double butted, a sweet 80s color, horizontal dropouts, and in decent condition, but not too nice where I would be too afraid to thrash it. Vintage bike information can sometimes be elusive online or in some cases non-existent. Apparently this is quad butted with Fuji's in-house Valite tubing. I actually installed the Chainstay Suntour decal. It's always a good sign when you take a look inside the bottom bracket shell and it's just super clean. Also another little detail is it has Suntour dropouts and I absolutely love being able to see the logo. You can still kind of see the Suntour logo in the front dropouts. So many things were fitting the bill for the frame I wanted to build with, and even details like the rear brake cable routing being under the top tube, so there wouldn't be a situation where I rip my bibs or nuts on the cable guides when normally in old frames they're on top of the tube, and if you don't have a rear brake cable housing running through them, they can create a pinch spot pretty much. Of course with vintage bikes they sometimes have goofy sizing and this seat post is 26.4. Like I mentioned, I have another old steel bike, and here's a sneak peek at my 1991 or 1992 Performance Vitesse. But I bring this up as you can see the cable routing is on top for the rear brake. When riding fixed with no brakes, the guides will definitely rip something if you wind up impacting the top tube. Also, every seat post I install, I always use the anti-seize compound for park tool. For the saddle, I'm using a specialized toupee. I love silver and black combo for components. Bottom bracket time. I love square taper bottom brackets. They are just so simple to work on and last for so long. When I do install them though, I always grease the threads both on the bottom bracket itself and the bottom bracket shell. I had a scare when researching this bike after I bought it as some Fujis that are even older had an oddball 70 millimeter English threaded bottom bracket shell. But thank goodness this frame is the standard 68 millimeters. Personally, I always start installing the bottom bracket by using only finger strength and not that much because if it's not threading in with only a tiny amount of finger strength, it's getting cross threaded and of course that will total frame if you use a tool cranking it down when you're first installing it. For the crank set combo, I had a pair of Shimano Tiagra 4400 cranks, 170 millimeter crank length. And also first time ordering a cheap chain ring from eBay and it actually doesn't have any issues nor feels poor quality so I'm impressed with it. Also had to mount the chain ring on the inside of the crank to get a proper chain line. Speaking of chain line, I was a little nervous about lining it up just right because of course when you're doing conversions. You never know if you're gonna get a straight chain line, but this one, even just eyeballing it at this point, was really looking good. As far as the wheel set goes, I bought these back in like 2010, no joke, from Pure Fix Cycles. They claimed it was their premium wheel set, but I didn't know any better at the time. But they just seem like an average unknown rim with what looks like Novatec hubs. And I have no complaints, they're just fine. This bike originally came with 27 inch wheels, but converting them to 700C works great. I wanted to also check the tire clearance with my vintage brake calipers that I had, and there's still so much tire clearance. I only had 23C tires laying around at the time, but I absolutely will be putting bigger tires in the near future. All right, another Uno product, 130 millimeter, 17 degree stem for 31.8 bars, and also an Origin 8 cool stem adapter. I went with a 31.8 clamp because I wanted to mount mountain bike flat bars and went with the Ritchie comp bars that are 720 millimeters wide and nine degrees of sweep. 
I have no plans on cutting these bars. I absolutely love the super wide bar feeling. I've never ridden fixed with this setup and it changed the game in my experience. It's much more enjoyable. So I spent a few extra dollars for the silver version of the KMC single speed chain and I honestly forgot how to size a fixed gear chain. So the only video I used to reference is still up on YouTube after 12 years. For the pedals, I wanted to be clipped in with the SPD SL setup instead of just the regular SPDs. I had some Shimano PDR 540 pedals laying around, so I was hyped that I didn't need to buy any pedals. Seriously, I couldn't have asked for a better chain line. Because it's fixed gear, I'm done. Here's the final shots of the finished bike. Can't wait to make another video and I'll catch you next time.